desde el cielo yo vi y hay perdona al curado todo y hay perdona cura Señor
quite sure she stands with her welcoming hands, as an alma mater too. For and white she's our greatest pride, ever so loyal we'll be. So we sing me out and we'll raise a shout for our business ESPC.
He currently serves as the Cabinet Secretary appointed by President Rodrigo Duterte in November 2018 to head the Office of the Cabinet Secretariat. The Secretary serves as close advisor to the President and ensures close coordination among the different agencies of government such as DILG, DPWH, DSWD, DOH, and others. He is committed to helping the President deliver his promise to bring development to all regions and provide more opportunities to those who live in the provinces and uplift the economy. He is also a staunch advocate of advancing programs against hunger to end and overcome hunger concerns in different parts of the country, find solutions to water shortages in households while expanding irrigation in agricultural lands, and to finally achieve long-term peace in Mindanao. Before he was appointed as cabinet secretary, Carlo was chair of the powerful House Committee on Appropriations, which approves the national budget for the annual expenses of the government. He served as three-term congressman of the 1st District of Davao City. A lawyer by profession, he previously worked for the Nograles Law Firm in Davao City. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles is a recipient of numerous prestigious awards such as the Outstanding Legislator. He received the Golden Globe Awards for Excellence in Public Service in 2015 and 2016. He was also recognized as an Outstanding Congressman in 2012 and 2015 by Super Brands Marketing International. He is a graduate of Philippine Science High School. He holds a degree in BS Management Engineering from the Ateneo de Manila University and a Juris Doctor from the Ateneo de Manila Law School. He was born and raised in Davao City, the second among four children of Prospero Nograles, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Rodora Benigno Nograles, a cousin of President Rodrigo Duterte. As Cabinet Secretary, Carlo leads the following, co-chair of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases or IAFTA, tasked to formulate policies and plans and lead all government efforts in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic as well as preparing the country for post-pandemic recovery. Chair of the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger, tasked to formulate the country's national food policy to ensure the attainment of zero hunger and poverty eradication, consistent with the Philippine Development Plan, and Chair of National Irrigation Administration, or NIA, which is responsible for the development and management of irrigation in agricultural lands. Chair of the Cabinet Assistance System, or CAS, which handles priority areas or matters which need special and immediate attention of the President and the Cabinet. Chair of the Cabinet Cluster Secretariat, which monitors the directives and promises of the different clusters of the Cabinet Secretariat. Among them are the Economic Development Cluster or EDC, Human Development and Poverty Reduction Cluster or HDPRC, Infrastructure Cluster IC, Security, Justice and Peace Cluster or SJPC, and others. He is also the author of the following laws. The Green Jobs Act, which encourages the creation of green jobs or jobs that preserve or restore the quality of the environment. Incentives are also given to businesses who are able to provide green jobs. Job Start Philippines Act, where high school graduates are given opportunities to register and become Job Start trainees to undergo training and have work experience that companies require. Free higher education, which ensures the college tuition is free from those enrolled in state colleges and universities, local universities and colleges as well as state-run technical vocational institutions. Salary increase for police and AFP personnel. As chair of the House Committee on Appropriations, he made sure that funding is provided for the following. Free higher education law, the national ID system, additional budget for irrigation, and the modernization of the equipment of the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Other laws which he advocated for are Cancer Care Bill, which aims to make cancer treatment affordable, universal health care bill to make health care free for all Filipinos, a bill that aims to have regular officials of barangays receive monthly salary, other awards received, TESDA Kabalikat Award for Region 9, TESDA Kabalikat Award for Region 11 in 2013 and 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Alexei B. Nograles. President Dr. Nelson Cabral, former Representative Celso Lobregat, college officials, faculty and staff, mga kababayan, buenas dias a todos. Malugod kong binabati ang Zamboanga City State Polytechnic College sa inyong ikasandaan at labing limang taong anibersaryo ng pagkakatatag 
at ikalabing siyam na taon bilang isang state college. Ang pamana ng mahigit sa isang siglo ng pagsisilbi, hindi labang sa Zamboanga City at Zamboanga Peninsula, ngunit maging sa buong bansa, ay nananatiling buhay at matibay na nabubuhay habang patuloy ninyong hinuhubog ang mga magsisilbing pinuno na siyang mga ngasiwa sa riyon at sa ating bansa sa mga darating na panahon. Ngayong tayo ay nahaharap sa pandemyang ito. Nais kong susugan ang napili niyong tema para sa inyong anibersaryo na Strengthening Resilience, Pursuing Excellence, and Upholding Social Responsibility. Habang ang mundo ay inilagay ng COVID sa walang katiyakang krisis, alam natin mga Pilipino na tayo ay likas na matatag at isang lahing matibay sa harap ng mga hamon. Gaano man kabigat ang ating kinakaharap, ay lagi nating napagtatagumpayan. Lalo lamang tayong pinalalakas bilang isang mamamayan at bilang isang bansa. At patuloy tayong nakakahanap ng mga paraan upang umangkop sa mga oras ng pangangailangan. Hindi tayo magpapagapi sa pandemyang ito. Sa ating pagbabayanihan, pagtutulungan at pakikipagkapwa na siyang patunay sa diwa ng ating pagka Pilipino, tiwala ko na malalampasan natin ang lahat. Mas mahusay tayong bansa pagkatapos nito. Abagan ninyo ang ating pag-angat. Muli, pinaabot ko sa inyo ang aking mainit na pagbati at dalangin na naway manatiling malusog at ligtas tayong lahat. Umaasa ko na sa lalong madaling panahon ay madalaw ko kayo. Muli, happy anniversary at mabuhay tayong lahat.
Happy, happy anniversary to Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College. It's been 115 years since you were founded as the trade school and 19 years in 2001 you became a state college. Soon, as soon as you comply with all the requirements, you will become Sambuanga Peninsula Polytechnic University. My message this year, let us survive the pandemic. Let us do our part in making sure that Sambuanga City progresses back to MGCQ and from MGCQ to the new normal. Happy anniversary. Let us stay safe, keep healthy, wear the face mask, keep social distancing, and practice proper hygiene. Honorable members of the Board of Trustees, President Nelson Cabral, Dr. Carlos Lulu, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Deans, Directors, Faculty, Staff, Students, Friends of the Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College, my greetings to the Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College community. In celebration of this year's foundation anniversary, I wish to extend my warmest congratulations to the administration, the faculty, staff, students, alumni, partner agencies, and friends of the college. This year's celebration comes in a rather challenging time. Hence, the call for the Sambuanga City Polytechnic State College to strengthen its resilience while pursuing excellence and upholding the value of social responsibility. The college which experience impactful milestone has been in existence for more than a century. Over the years, the Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College has been producing graduates who have been successful in their chosen fields of endeavor in industry, in national agencies, professional, and academic institutions. You have strong linkages with other agencies, particularly government and industry, which paved the way for the stronger research and relevant extension programs. Your needs academic programs are identified and are the platforms of the areas of competence and your board and brand of development in line with your vision. Just like any Filipino, your college is no stranger to challenges and difficult times. Your college is witnessed through time numerous moments of the historic fall and rebuildings your province and its neighbors have experienced and have lived with them. You were there with them and for them. Building it, lending a hand together, getting back to your own feet. The, this COVID-19 pandemic just highlighted now Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College has excellently managed 
to rise above the call of the times. Your college has utilized all equipment, called on every staff, exhausted all means necessary to face the crisis head on and ri rise above it. My congratulations to you and to the leadership of President Cabral for having produced close to 7,000 face shields, 4,000 plus face masks, 1,200 food, toiletry packs, 2,037 food assistants, and all other aids for your beloved Sambuanguenos. To thrive in difficult times requires not only strong visionary leadership, but a collective effort of every member of the educational community towards the direction of excellence. I thank and congratulate all of you for supporting one another in this shared vision and responsibility. My office and the Commission are always open to back your college plans and programs as it reframes the delivery of its services in the new normal. And I hope that these concerted efforts, collective spirit, will serve as an inspiration to all of you in giving your best not only to serve, but to serve your college and the community as well. I am very happy that you have used all the resources of your college in dealing with the pandemic time. The changes in the educational landscape brought about by the pandemic are unprecedented. Leadership amid global health crisis requires the college to be trailblazers. It means taking the roads that have literally been never traveled before and to create the path that has never been discovered. I hope that your history of 115 full years of overcoming one challenge after another will continue to inspire all of you to continue to lead this exciting journey ahead. Lastly, may the spirit of service long ingrained in your school's DNA and brand continue to run a blaze for the true measure of excellence is the significance and relevance the institution brings to the communities it partners with. The true essence of an institution is measured by the influence and impact of its initiatives in the lives of the people. It serves. The true measure of greatness is not how tall we stand in the face of trials and tribulations, but how wide we are able to extend ourselves to help others rise. You have shown to us and all the Sambuanguinos how big your heart is and how capable your hands are for service. May you continue to serve the people and together with you the Commission of Higher Education also reaffirms its commitment to sustain excellence and cultivate significance not only during this pandemic but beyond. Despite the challenges of the new normal, let us truly remain steadfast in our commitment to fight, to excel, and to serve. We are counting you on this call. Congratulations once again and saludo Sambuanga City State Polytechnic College. Mabuhay! The mandate of an educational institution can go to as many versions of resolving problems and initiating important projects. 
But what sets apart an institution which delivers goods of best practices is its consistency to search for breakthroughs in any given situation like passive eras of times of crisis. For this is the home of almost 10,000 students, faculty, and administrative personnel, Sampanga City State Polytechnic College has been gaining grounds for new heights and a stable abode for academic standards and structural empowerment. In the year 2017, the college played witness to the multi-million turnaround infrastructure project to place CCSPC in the arena of palpable infrastructure upgrade. 102.8 million pesos poured into the institution to replenish its structural limitations in lecture rooms, laboratories, and workshops. This is a version of the government's Build, Build, Build project infrastructure getting its physical manifestation in the very soil of the college. There is a value of consistency for an educational institution to carry through its vision to be in the league of the best polytechnic colleges in Southeast Asia. In its aggressive stature, four new buildings and one building completion projects started construction in fiscal year 2018 with a staggering cost of 102 million pesos, including a 4 million two-story building implemented through the DPWH in 2018. In 2019 and in the coming years, the eyes of our stakeholders will be glued to the important vertical structures of the college, to wit, the completion of Academic Maritime Building, Phase 7, refitting of Garments and Textile Building Shop Laboratory, 3-story Social Science Building, 4-story Engineering Building, and Construction Repair Rehabilitation Academic Building or IGP. 2018 will not be remembered with an unprecedented equipment and machineries upgrade for the engineering, technology, and maritime engineering programs, including the procurement of the remarkable 21 million pesos bridge simulator, a highly sophisticated maneuvering simulator which introduces deck cadets to complex realistic simulation environments in the professional maritime live experience. Milestones after breakthroughs, January 2019 is a pivotal year for ZCSPC as it is officially converted into a university by the virtue of the Republic Act 11187, authored by the former Congressman Celso Lorenzo Lobregat, Converting ZCSPC into a state university, Sambuanga Peninsula Polytechnic State University. In addition to the many significant milestones, ZCSPC left 2019 with a spectacular achievement in research and development. A record-breaking 35 industrial design registrations were produced by the College of Engineering and Technology and the College of Technical Education faculty. The patents, which are slated for transfer of technology and utilization in select communities, were successfully registered with the Intellectual Property Office in December 2019. The Bar of Excellence did not waver in the onset of 2020 as ZCSPC has embraced digital transformation in teaching and learning. Known as the Massive Open Online Course or MOOC Project, the college has embraced the learning technology and platform that is used by 942 top universities in the world. MOOC is a hybrid learning management system which can capture the principles of blended, flipped, and distance education learnings. Because of the MOOC project, the institution's paramount vision to regional and international integration, as well as a crisis-responsive preparedness in terms of teaching learning modalities, is now closer than ever to realization. Just recently, July 6 this year, ZCSPC launched the My E-Class ZCSPC. A 20.6 million peso procurement package was allotted for the learning management system software and broadband upgrade. This is where both the faculty and students can journey the academic experiences that can attest to technological advancement and quality of education. To comprehensively transform the college into a digital institution, it has initiated a software-based enrollment and admission process from a 4.5 million funding from CHED. As they say, the road can be tested anytime. COVID-19 ravaged the world because of its health risks to as many human beings everywhere. ZCSPC responded head-on by pumping up its laboratories and workshops to mass-produce personal protective equipment for the frontliners in Zamboanga City. The college has been a source of inspiration to many government and private institutions to go on the fight the pandemic. Because of its organic creativity, the college successfully won a 15 million peso grant from CHED to further mass-produce PPEs 
and innovative food for its frontliners and stakeholders. ZCSPC never runs out of innovativeness and responsiveness to the community. It implemented the food production training for its extension services, food packs for the stranded students, healthy snacks for frontliners, 8,000 units of face shields, 7,500 units of face masks, and 100 units of food disinfect trays. ZCSPC will always be on its toes on whatever climate it may be in. It will continuously glide to the tide of quality and consistency. In fact, it will never forget its blueprint to be compliant to Industry 4.0. The college is investing today for the Education 4.0 that will dominate the learning and professional scenes in the next decade. A 10 million peso project for welding training system is up for actualization through the project. Improving teaching and learning of engineering and technology programs through updating of facilities to produce graduates with technical skills aligned with the requirements of Industry 4.0, another 10 million peso project is in the works for the enhanced teaching and learning of engineering and technology programs through acquisition of e-learning solution as a flexible response to pandemic and to produce graduates with technical skills aligned with the requirements of Industry 4.0. The monumental achievements of ZCSPC across three years of leadership under Dr. Nelson P. Cabral are attributed to the unwavering support of the Board of Trustees of this institution, headed by the unfaltering proactive initiatives and unprecedented dynamism of the Chair of the Board of Trustees, Commissioner Perfecto Alibin. The future landscape of education in the coming years may seem uncertain. ZCSPC is determined to live up to its mandate and its dream to be the leading polytechnic university in Southeast Asia. Indeed.